the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to take another look at the passage in Acts. I wish we had about an hour to really enjoy the story. It's, um, it's an amazing passage, partly because it calls so little attention to itself. If you're reading, just casually reading, you're not going to notice that this is a major, major turning point, not only in the history of the church, but literally in the history of the world. And if you were reading casually, it would feel to you like it's not very long since the crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and the giving of the, of the Great Commission. But in fact, it's been about 15 years, perhaps as many as 20. The Great Commission was go into all the world, preach the gospel to all nations, you're not to keep it to yourself. It's not for Jews only. It's for all nations, tribes, peoples, languages. And yet, for the first decade and a half, that's precisely what they did. They kept it to themselves with very, very few exceptions. There was the, the Ethiopian eunuch. There was Cornelius and his household. Tens of thousands of Jews have become Christians by this time, but very, very few Gentiles. And we began with verse 19. Now, those who were scattered because of the persecution that took place, when they finally began to move out into Gentile territory, it was not out of zeal for the gospel, a desire to fulfill the Great Commission and win the nations. It was because they were persecuted out. And even then, when they went into Gentile territory, it says they, they traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, and even then, they spoke the word to no one except Jews, with a notable exception. But among them were some men of Cyprus and Cyrene, who, on coming to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists also, proclaiming the Lord Jesus. Some of them. We don't even know their names. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. When all else fails, read the instructions. <laughs> when they were finally on it, proclaiming the gospel to everyone, the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number became believers and turned to the Lord. News of this came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem. The apostles, sturdy leaders of the church, still back in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. Barnabas, you remember, we met in chapter 4 when they began that experiment in communal living. Put everything into a common pot, give most of it away, and share what's left. And we discover Barnabas is a wealthy Cyprian Levite. He sells a piece of land and he contributes it to the pot. And Barnabas is a nickname. Uh, it means son of encouragement. And he's the great unsung hero of the book of Acts. He's the one who's willing to give you a chance when nobody else will. And when you mess up, give you a second chance. And that's another whole story. But they sent him to be the, the, the pastor, in effect. When he came and saw the grace of God, he rejoiced and he exhorted them all to remain faithful to the Lord with steadfast devotion. For he was a good man, full of faith, and of the Holy Spirit. I love that. I like that on my tombstone. Not now. <laughs> and a great many people were brought to the Lord. And you can just see him saying to himself, this is getting too big for me to handle. I need some help. So he goes to Tarsus to get Saul, who everybody is a little concerned about. You know, we heard that he became a Christian, but after all, he was a persecutor and murderer of Christians. It's been about 8 to 10 years, maybe 11 years, since Saul was converted. Flurry of activity at that time, and then he drops out of sight. We know from the book of Galatians that he spent three years uh, in Arabia. That was his seminary experience when God revealed the gospel to him by revelation. I got it from no man, he says, but by revelation. You can just see Barnabas saying, who can I get to help me with this, this congregation, this exploding congregation? Saul. He's a Jew. He's a Pharisee, but he also was trained at the feet of Gamaliel. He is a Roman citizen. He's the perfect guy. He's got by the dual uh, citizenship. 
so he went to Tarsus and found Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was for an entire year, they met with the church and taught a great many people, and it was in Antioch that the disciples were first called Christians. And then you get the flavor of this church in the next paragraph. This is amazing. At that time, prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch, always down from Jerusalem. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and predicted by the Spirit that there would be a severe famine over all the world, and this took place during the reign of Claudius. The disciples determined that according to their ability, each would send relief to the believers living in Judea, and this they did, sending it to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Okay, it's spring of 2005. We're gathered here. And an unknown prophet comes in and says, Could I speak to you? <coughs> God. There is going to be the worst hurricane in the history of America. It is going to hit the whole Gulf area. But it's going to devastate New Orleans. And we say, How in the world do you know that? <laughs> That's what's going on here. A prophet came and predicted there would be a famine. And it's going to hit the whole area, but it's going to really clobber the folks back in Jerusalem because, number one, they gave away everything. They don't have anything saved up for a rainy day. Number two, they're under persecution. And rather than saying, nobody could possibly know that, everybody grabs their wallet and sends relief. This is an amazing church. Then we read in the 13th chapter about them praying and fasting and the Holy Spirit is saying, set apart for me, Barnabas and Saul, our pastors. We need them. We're dependent on them. We're brand new baby Christians. We've been Christians for less than a year. And we, we weren't Jews beforehand. We didn't have the Old Testament scriptures. This is all new to us. You're taking away our pastors? And they laid their hands on them and sent them off. And so begins what comes to be known as the first of the three great missionaries of Saint, missionary journeys of St. Paul, which totally transformed the world. An amazing church that practiced what they preached. The gospel is for everybody. Look at that list of characters in chapter 13. They have nothing in common with each other except for the Lord. They're eager to obey, whether it's give our money or give our pastors. And God used them to transform the world.